We're so <laughs> delighted to have with us Dr. Mark Siljander. He is a former Congressman of the United States and he's written an incredible book concerning Christianity and Islam. Yes. Very insightful. And you're gonna to wanna to hear from this man who served our country in the uh, Congress for so many, many years. Our first guest today has lived an amazing life. Uh, he has been a congressman in the United States for three terms. He's been an ambassador to the United Nations. He's traveled to some 130 countries of the world. He has uh, been prolific in his pursuit of education with multiple degrees. And we're delighted to have with us from the greater Washington, D.C. area, Congressman Mark Siljander. Congressman, God Thank bless you, you sir. Thank so you. great to have you. And he's written a book entitled, A Deadly Misunderstanding, A Congressman's Quest to Bridge the Muslim-Christian Divide. And as I understand, this all started from an incident at a national prayer breakfast where uh, the Koran was read from, and you didn't like that. No, I was a very strong, conservative, evangelical member of Congress. And when the ambassador, I think of was Saudi Arabia, read the Quran at the National Prayer Breakfast, I wrote a protest letter off immediately to the titular head and said, why in the world would you read a book of the devil at a Christian meeting like this? So he came to my office and two questions he asked me, Marcus and Johnny, changed my whole life and direction of the life. So Just, what did he ask you? Asked. Okay, well, <laughs> the first question, he said, what is your strategy for Islam? I said, well, we need to convert them all to the Christian religion, of course. And he said, okay, the second question, have you ever read the Quran? And of course, being a young, a 29-year-old member of Congress and a little bit full of myself and perhaps too arrogant, I said, well, of course I did not read the Quran. So it was humiliating. Then he said, how about a Bible verse for the strategy for Muslims? I said, we need to convert him to the Christian religion. He said, I heard you. Where is the Bible verse that you can quote to confirm it? And I started thinking, so we'll go into the world. He said, no, that doesn't have anything to do with Christianity or converting them to a religion. So I told him I'd get back to him. And a year later, studying the New Testament three times to vindicate myself, to get back to this man who humility made, humiliated me twice, I couldn't find any verses about converting to religion, but I found a lot, of course, in my reading about Jesus Christ and yes. turning, and to the name of your book, Johnny, surrendering yeah. to the one Messiah, Jesus. I did find that. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so as you start, so you, did you read, ultimately read the Quran? Yes, I studied it now for 15 years. Wow. Yeah. And you know, most Christians have no idea what it's about. And to me, I found one of the best ways to ingratiate, ingratiate yourself to the Muslim people and to get them to consider what you have to say about Jesus is to quote from the Koran because it has a lot to say about Jesus in there, doesn't it? Marcus, how about 110 times he's mentioned? Wow, he's, that's he's a lot. He's Jesus, the Messiah. And just that alone, if your listeners would contemplate, Jesus is the Messiah 11 times in the Koran. Moreover, he is the Word of God, the Word of Truth the Spirit of God, supernaturally conceived by the Holy Spirit through a virgin named Mary, born sinless, who could then later in life heal the sick, the blind, raise the dead. He's an intercessor, mediator. He died. He was resurrected. He was taken up near to God and coming back on Judgment Day. Now that is not in the Bible, which it is, but it's also all in the Quran. Incredible. I think that right there is blowing away most of our Christian <laughs> viewers. And you know, and I'd probably say there's probably a lot of Muslims that don't even realize that, that it says all that about Jesus in there. I've had Muslims, when I simply quote their holy book, faint, close their eyes, and some whisper, you know, I've been dreaming about Jesus. Yes, and we're hearing those stories. So uh, to me, rather than arguing it's a book of the devil, I've come from a much different paradigm. I respect and revere the Quran. It's written in a way that uh, it's difficult to understand the Arabic, but I've been studying the Arabic language and finding that if you study the Aramaic language of Jesus, you remember Mel Gibson's movie, of yeah. course, he spoke Aramaic, Jesus, which is Semitic language. The Quran's written in Arabic, a Semitic language. They're like Italian and Portuguese, they're similar. And if you read the English versions, they clash 
But when one reads the Semitic versions of the Quran and the Bible, instead of clashing, much more meshes. And we can, we can uh, bridge the divide about, is Jesus the Son of God? What about the Trinity? What about the deity of Jesus? These penetrating, devastatingly divisive issues that have caused militancy to be empowered and caused wars and hatred between the two of us. You know, down through history, ignorance has launched wars and strife and uh, combatancy. And uh, the scripture says, and you'll know the truth and the truth will set you free. Yes. So we need to know the truth regardless of where the truth lies, don't we, Congressman? Yeah, exactly. Like you've written a book called Surrender. And the word Muslim, ironically, means one who is surrendered. And when Jesus said we should convert, and that's what wow. turned me by studying the Aramaic, there was the word convert, though, in the Bible. Mm -hmm. But it means surrender in the ancient Aramaic. Mm -hmm. It doesn't mean deny your culture, deny your faith, and join my religious club called Christianity or anything. Mm -hmm. It's an internal turning, an internal surrendering to Jesus and to the one God and his Messiah. Interesting. I love, thank you for sharing that. And what I'm hearing is that we cannot reach anyone without the love of Christ. And so many times I think we as Christians have gotten it wrong, and I can say it about us because I am one, <laughs> but um, I just did a whole series on, on abortion and kind of sharing exactly what abortion is. We actually, in a few weeks, are gonna be showing an actual abortion. And, um, but we don't do it in a condemning, condescending way. We share what the truth of it is, but we say for those women who have had abortions, we love you and God loves you and there is forgiveness, there's healing, there's restoration and those children are with the Lord. And when you come through the filter of love, yes, that's you're good. able to point them to the one who's changed our life, who, who was Jesus. And don't you think we've gotten it wrong? I mean, even the way you acted for you to sit there and say, that was not the correct way to respond. And for you to be man enough to say I was wrong, I appreciate that. And I think, oh, yes. I think we as Christians need to apologize for some of our behavior. And no wonder the world is afraid of us, right? Well, you right? think about the Crusades. You know, we went and slaughtered all, thousands of Muslims and we all did it in the name of God, so to speak. And what did the Crusaders for 200 years slaughter tens of thousands of Muslims and Jews yeah. and 55,000 Christians in Turkey because they didn't pre pray the way we, they prayed. They had wow. crosses on their heads, on their, their killing instruments were shaped like crosses. Mm -hmm. So then we go back to Muslims and say, hey, let's talk about the cross. <laughs> it's yeah. not really an easy yeah. segue, but if you talk about Jesus and you do it with unconditional love, and you're not threatening to convert them to some uh, culture that reflects Jerry Springer and MTV's uh, decadence and HBO's violence. If you tell them, we don't want you to convert to Western Christianity, we like you to recognize the Jesus that's in your own holy book. Yeah. And it's a lot like the one in mine, and we have more common ground than we ever understood. Now, what does this do? Besides sharing the love of Jesus, it undermines the radical militants who are attempting to propagate their insane ideology and destroy the West. So we do one, two things. We lift Jesus up while undermining militant radical Islam and empowering the vast majority of Muslims who want to embrace the Lord and want to live normal lives like the rest of us. Okay, can we put this in perspective for our viewers today, Congressman, about what percentage of Muslims would be radical Islam? There was a huge Gallup poll, six years, 32 countries on Islam and thought. So I'll just quote from their data. 93% of Muslims aren't for Sharia law. They don't want to uh, Islamize the world. They just want to live normal lives.